Yo, 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 it's your boy Peter, and today we'll be talking about syphilis. Well, there's already a recording on syphilis, but that's longer and in depth, so I decided to make something shorter and just much more of a general overview. So, as we all know, syphilis is a sexually transmitted disease caused by the spirochetal bacterium Treponema pallidum. It's mortal and an anaerobic bacteria, meaning it can live in the absence of oxygen. We could also call it T. pallidum for short. The transmission of syphilis is almost always through sexual contact or congenitally through the placenta to a fetus or at birth from an infected mother. So, we should also know that there are different manifestations which occur depending on the stage of the disease. Now, syphilis can be divided into several stages and the major stages are the primary stage, the secondary stage, the latent stage and the tertiary stage. And then we have the congenital syphilis which are further divided into the early and the late stage. And these stages they come with signs and symptoms. Now, primary syphilis. It is the first stage after infection. It uh, brings forth symptoms of painless and localized ulcer with a road edge which is known as a chancre. It may be single or multiple ulcers forming on the skin and it appears two to three weeks after contact. The most common site of this ulceration are the cervix, the vagina, the vulva, the anus and the mouth. And then we would have affection of the regional lymph nodes because since we have um, major affected sites, sites being the groin, we would have the lymph nodes in the groin area being affected because from inoculation, from infection of the syphilitic bacteria, it spreads from the ulcers into uh, regional lymph nodes to, it, to cause an inflammation of these lymph nodes and causing them to enlarge. It's the inflammatory response. And now, the primary syphilis has an incubation period of 9 to 90 days but usually 21 days is what it would take for this uh, incubation period to last and then it develops at the site of contact or inoculation this means that the ulcer would form at the site where the transmission of the disease took place so if you have an infected person who makes out for example with an uninfected person and there is contact of his his or her groin which contains these ulcers with high loads of infection with that of an uninfected person we would have the formation of this ulcer in the uninfected person after the incubation period and then that will be the point of entry of the syphilitic bacteria into this uninfected person hereby making he or she infected now classically there are single painless clean based indurated ulcers or chancres with firm raised borders so there may be atypical presentation it may not always be how i just described it because it comes in different forms but usually these ulcers are not painful in the primary form but they're highly infectious so they are mostly anogenital but may occur at any site on the tongue on the pharynx on the lips on the fingers on the nipples whatever and then these uh, ulcers are non-tender well uh, these these ulcers may may also uh, cause a very very high grade infection uh, affecting the lymph nodes making them kind of non-tender and uh, kind of bumpy not the ulcers the lymph nodes so um, there may be dark field positive test on uh, uh, on diagnosis but serologically it's negative if I may. I'm not going to go deep into that. So untreated it heals in several weeks leaving a faint scar. Now we move to the secondary stage of syphilis. There is a skin rash and now this skin rash becomes diffuse because now we have uh, dissemination of this bacteria in the blood and then uh, blood vessels that go to the skin and then you have these tiny inflammatory reactions that uh, brings forth the rash and then this rash is spread all over the skin and it's often with a superficial scale papillosquamous like kind of 
flat and whatever you have it and then it may leave residual pigmentation or depigmentation you mean you may have some darker spots on the skin or you may have lighter spots on the skin then there is also the formation of a condyloma lata it looks like a wart and they they may be large they may be pale or flat topped and it occurs in warm moist areas such as the perineum and it's highly infectious you may find it in probably the pubic area or in the axilla where you have much more perspiration and then you have the mucosal lesions 30% uh, of secondary syphilis patient develop mucosal uh, mucus patches which are slightly raised oval areas covered by a grayish white membrane with a pink base that does not bleed it's also highly infectious and then the systemic forms of the secondary stage of syphilis it occurs one to six months after contact there will be fever malaise general adenopathy non itchy skin rash which may be known as money spot it involves the palms of the hands and the soles of the feet mucus patches and linear kind of like a line snail track ulcers are seen on the mucosal surfaces and then uh, secondary syphilis uh, seen six weeks to six months after the primary chancre you would find these manifestations which i just mentioned and usually with diffuse non-itchy indurated rash including the palms and the soles so this is what we actually use for uh, kind of like a close to proper diagnosis for the secondary forms of syphilis you would have these rash on the nails palms and soles of the feet there will be fever malaise headache sore throat muscle pain joint pain and generalized lymphadenopathy the lymphatic system is affected lymph nodes are affected in 10 percent of people you may have hepatitis uh, you may have affection of the kidney due to the immune system reaction and uh, you would have inflammation of the iris or anterior uveitis you have bone inflammation and affection of the uh, cerebrospinal fluid this is affection of the meninges of uh, of the spinal cord the these structures that protect the structure of uh, the central nervous system <laughs> whatever and then in secondary syphilis also the differential diagnosis uh, uh, could be um, differential diagnosis between drug eruptions acute febrile exanthemas psoriasis uh, lichen planus and scabies because you may have the formation of this rash which may look like any one of these um, uh, diseases or reactions I have mentioned such as allergy to drugs and the rest of them the mucus patch may be confused with oral thrush and then there will be malaise sore throat generalized adenopathy hepatitis and rash may be confused with infectious mononucleosis but the serologic tests for syphilis are positive in 99 percent of secondary syphilis patients so the serological test can help with proper diagnosis the latent form of syphilis comes with a positive syphilis serology without clinical signs of syphilis in the latent form of syphilis it begins with the end of secondary syphilis and may last for a lifetime the patient may or may not have had a primary or secondary syphilis or some patients don't even report that they've had primary or secondary syphilis before this latent form and the disease is known to cause occasional false positive non treponemal test which is the diagnostic uh, test for syphilis such as systemic uh, lupus erythematosus and congenital syphilis must be excluded before the diagnosis of latent syphilis can be made now latent syphilis is divided into early and late latency in the early latent form it occurs the first year after the resolution of primary or secondary lesions or a reactive serologic test for syphilis in an asymptomatic individual who has had a negative serologic test within the preceding year and then it is infectious in the latent form it's not infectious except for the pregnant woman who may transmit the infection to her fetus now the tertiary syphilis 
It is the destructive stage of the disease. Lesions would develop in the skin and the bone, widespread infection. Now we have these things going deep into organs and affecting them. And the main types are the late benign, which is the formation of inflammatory granulomatous lesions on organs, which are called syphilitic gumas. They are like rubbery tumor-like masses that uh, form in various organs and the bone and they have a rubbery constituent constituency <laughs> so in other words that means when we take a section of tissue or probably when we make a post-mortem study like a corpse we open up this corpse and this corpse you know uh, has had syphilis or the latent or tertiary form we will find these lesions these gumas these tiny tumor looking kind of structures in the organs and the second form is the cardiovascular type which affects the heart and neurosyphilis which affects the brain and affects the spinal cord and then it could go and cause uh, paralysis which is what we call paralysis of the insane because then there is affection of the patient's behavior this occurs years after the person has gotten primary syphilis and then the patient can become crippled so it's a crippling uh um it's a crippling situation and then it's also a life-threatening um stage of the disease and then it comes with blindness deafness deformity lack of co lack of coordination and paralysis and even dementia which was what i already explained it's usually very slowly progressive barring certain neurologic syndromes which um may develop suddenly due to the uh, end, end arteritis and thrombosis in the central nervous system so clots can even form and inflammation of vessels in the brain and nervous system as a whole can form and now the late form of syphilis is not infectious the latent syphilis uh, comes with a positive syphilis serology without clinical signs of syphilis and has normal cerebrospinal fluid. This is the fluid in the arach subarachnoid space in the meninges, the, um, the coverings of the spinal cord and the brain. So it begins with the end of secondary syphilis and may last for a lifetime. Patients may, you know, may not actually even come with such um, with such uh, symptoms or complaints of ha formerly having been infected with syphilis and so in other words it's very 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 important that we take a detailed history now the latent syphilis uh, has no symptoms or physical findings and one third may proceed to the tertiary form and in tertiary syphilis it occurs one to ten years after infection and the gumas ulcerative nodules in the skin bone and nervous system are as a result of hypersensitivity reactions that's immune system reactions and then the systemic infections which was what i mentioned before would include the heart the central nervous system and the arteries most especially the aorta which carries blood from the left side of the heart to all other organs so inflammation and destruction of the lining of the aorta causes weakness and which may lead to aneurysm and further rupture and bleeding into uh, uh, internal bleeding i would say or bleeding into the body so this is as a result of the complication of syphilis now we go to the congenital syphilis the mode of transmission in congenital syphilis is transplacental which is the passage from infected mother or at birth congenital infection is associated with several adverse outcomes including low birth weight premature birth congenital abnormalities and miscarriages or death of the baby and it's divided into the early stage and late stage in the early stage we see skin lesions maculopapular tissue lymphadenopathy enlargement of liver and enlargement of the spleen failure of the baby to thrive jaundice which is yellowing of the skin anemia osteochondritis not 
<laughs> osteochondritis and then in the late form we see gomatous ulcers we see bony prominence of the forehead there is a saddle nose of which is like this depression that we see on the bridge of the nose and then there is a short maxilla there's keratitis inflammation of the eye and then there is the deafness and dental deformities which is known as Hodgkin's or Hodgkin's teeth I can't pronounce that so well so um, the prevention and treatment of of syphilis not syphilis syphilis the first choice of treatment for all manifestations of syphilis is penicillin parenteral penicillin or intravenous penicillin or injection of penicillin G is the only therapy documented to be effective during pregnancy in non-pregnant women or individuals who have severe allergic reactions to penicillin we give tetracycline or doxycycline prevention is well prevent just get into the disease you know so um, it's very important that we try as much as possible to protect ourselves from infection and try to live a healthy life thanks thanks so much sorry for the mistakes thanks again see you next time